Welcome to your second quadratic relations review, which is optional, but I'm hoping some of you guys are taking advantage of this. For tomorrow's test, we need to make sure that you do know how to describe transformations. And I have two different equations, and both of these equations we will realize that they are in vertex form. And vertex form is written as y equals a x minus h squared plus k. So when you look at this very first equation, the best bet is to actually label what a, h, and k are. You'll notice that the value at the very beginning is a, so a is equal to 3. You'll notice inside my brackets I have plus 5, but vertex form is usually minus some type of number. And the only way that that can be happen to get a plus 5 is if h is negative, so negative 5 in this case. And finally, your k value at the very end we notice is negative 1. What this tells you to describe this uh, transformation to y equals x squared is that the parabola is stretched by a factor of 3 it is shifted 5 units left that's from the h And the negative 1 tells me down one unit. And just as a side note as well, we know that the A value also gives you your step property, which is usually 1, 3, 5. So that would tell you 3A would be 3, 9, and 15. Meaning from your vertex, you would go right 1 up 3, right 1 up 9, and then right 1 up 15. Let us look at B, where I have negative 4, x minus 6, plus 2. That would give us that our A value at the beginning is negative 4. Your H value is 6, and K is 2. To describe this in words, the parabola, the negative tells you, is reflected in the x-axis. This is just a fancy word to say opening down. The 4 here tells you it's vertically stretched by a factor of 4. It shifts 6 units the right, that comes from H, and it shifts two units. The K value tells you it shifts two units up. Okay. A second thing that you're going to know, need to know for the test tomorrow is if I ask you to determine the equation of a parabola, in vertex form given the following and I'm just going to list it for us my apologies let me get this on the screen we are given that the vertex is at let's say 6 and let's say 2 and the parabola passes through a point let's say 8 8. How do we go about writing out the equation here? Again, this all comes back from vertex form. The h and the k value comes from your vertex. So that would be y equals a x minus 6, that's the h value, squared, and plus 2. We need to know what the stretch or compression factor is, and that's a. And in order to solve for that, we use our point 0.88, which is the x and the y value, which we substitute in. So that will become 8 equals a, and I'll have 8 minus 6 squared plus 2. I need to solve for a. I see that I have this positive 2 on the right-hand side. 
I can move that over and we would get 8 minus 2. I still have a and I know that 8 minus 6 is 2 and I will be squaring that in just a moment. So 6 is equal to 4a. Both sides of the equation must be divided by 4 so we get 3 over 2 is the value of a. Simplifying the fraction we keep our a as in fraction form so therefore y is equal to the 3 over 2 and I go all the way back up to here to finish off the equation. x minus 6 squared plus 2. And that is the equation in vertex form of that quadratic relation. What if I have, say, in vertex form, if I have y equals 3 x minus 2 squared plus 3. How would we write this in standard form? Well, to complete this in standard form, we have to realize that we have to expand x minus 2, and that becomes x minus 2 squared, and make sure you do keep the addition of 3 outside the brackets. To expand the x minus 2, x minus 2, we must use FOIL. So that means we must multiply the first terms, the outside terms, the inside terms, and the last terms all must be multiplied together. Then I solve the plus 3 outside here because I'm adding that later on. So what that gives you is that we have 3 x squared minus 4x plus 4 and then plus 3 still. I must take this 3 now and multiply it through the brackets. three times x squared is three x squared, three times negative four is negative twelve x, three times four is plus twelve, and I still have plus three. So therefore, in standard form, three x squared minus twelve x plus fifteen. No, I'm just pulling this number out randomly. I would like to see if we can factor this and put it into factored form. Well, we'll notice in factored form, y would be equal to, well, each term is divisible by 3. So 3, we would have x squared minus 4x plus 5. Unfortunately, in this case, we don't have an option that works out. We can't go... Um, factor any farther than that. But let us just say, let's suppose, just for fun, that we had y equals 3 x squared minus 4x minus 5. This is just for fun now. Well, we'll notice in here that this is a simple trinomial. So y would in, be, in fact be equal to 3 and two numbers that multiply to negative 5 and add to negative 4, that would be x minus 5 and x plus 1. This is now in factored form. Why is it so important to know how to do this in factored form? Well, that lets you know that your 1x intercept is 5 and your other x intercept is negative 1. And why does that even matter? Well, then we can determine what your axis of symmetry is. Because your axis of symmetry would be 5 plus negative 1 all over 2. And that would tell you that your that would be 4 over 2 and your axis of symmetry would be 2. Which is all cool. 
you can figure out your vertex as well by taking this 2 and stuffing it back into the equation. Well, awesome. One last thing. What if I asked you, say tomorrow, sketch y equals, let's say, negative 2 x plus 1 squared minus 3. The big thing that we know from this is that my vertex would be at negative 1, negative 3, and this negative 2 tells me opens down, and my step property, which is negative 2a, would be negative 2, negative 6, negative 10. So you go to negative 1, negative 3, somewhere around there on your Cartesian plane, and you would go right 1, down 2, left 1, down 2, and you go right 1, down 6, etc. And you would be able to graph your quadratic equation. And I hope that basically tells you more information that could help you study for your test tomorrow.